Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper that proposes a new data structure called a skip list. This was proposed by William Pugh back in 1990. And the reason I find it interesting is that although there's research and innovation going on in the area of data structures, most of it tends to be in the direction of more esoteric, more complex data structures. Whereas skip lists do what balanced trees can do which is fast lookups, insertions, and deletions, but in a simpler manner. As the author says over here, skip lists are a probabilistic alternative to balanced trees. If you remember Data Structures 101, you'll remember that in order to not fall into these pathological corner cases with just regular trees, where search time becomes order n, Balanced search trees, things like red black trees or AVL trees, explicitly do work to keep the two branches of a tree roughly balanced. And this lets them establish an order log n bound on looking up items. Skip lists try to maintain that balance but in a probabilistic manner. And as we'll see, that's a lot easier to do than explicitly doing work to maintain that balance in a tree, for example. So to build some intuition for how skip lists work, let's look at what happens if we keep adding additional so-called skip pointers to a regular linked list data structure. So here you start with A, which is a linked list with elements in sorted order. And if you wanted to find an element in this linked list, of course, you would have to do a linear search and it would take at most n lookups. Now let's look at this linked list B, where what we are doing is having every second element have an additional pointer that points to the element two nodes ahead of it. In such a data structure, you would need at most n divided by two lookups to find an element because you could keep skipping two nodes at a time until you overshot the element you were looking for and then you would look one node behind you to find that element. So let's carry this reasoning one step further. If you had a linked list data structure where every fourth node, for example this node containing nine, had additional links out to a node four ahead of itself, you would then require at most n by four lookups to find an element. And this brings us to the generalization, which is the core idea behind skip lists, which is that if every two to the ith node had a pointer two to the i nodes ahead of it, then finding elements in such a data structure would be order log n. And in terms of space, you would only be doubling the number of pointers. Now, this is a deterministic setup. You could use it for fast searching, but insertion and deletion would not be so simple because you'd have to rearrange all the pointers throughout your data structure. In terms of terminology, a node with k forward pointers is called a level k node. And if you organize your data structure the way we just described it, the number of level k nodes would follow kind of a familiar logarithmic pattern where half of them would be level one, one fourth would be level two, one eighth would be level three and so on. The next core idea behind the skip list data structure is to get rid of the determinism with which these level k nodes are placed along the data structure. So you choose them essentially randomly but in these same proportions where the number of level k nodes is approximately 1 over 2 to the power of k. And this gives you the really nice property that insertions and deletions only require local modifications at the level of a node and not throughout the data structure. Now, of course, anytime you're using randomness and probability in a data structure, there is always the possibility of some pathological input or sequence making it such that your lookup times become slow. But they show over here that the likelihood of that happening is tiny enough that it should not matter in practice. 
let's look at what the search, insert, and delete operations for skip lists look like. Each element is represented by a node, of course. And like we just talked about, the level of a node is chosen randomly when the node is inserted. And this is independent of the total number of elements in the data structure. A level i node will have i forward pointers, where the ith one points to the element 2 to the power of i ahead of it. The method of searching in a skip list is fairly straightforward. You start at the highest level. So for example, take this skip list in figure D over here. You would start at the highest level and jump forward at the level I nodes until you reached a node that was greater than the element you were looking for. And when that happens, you downshift to the level just below it. And you keep doing this until you overshoot at level one. And if that happens, then the element you're looking for will be the element just before the one where you overshot. And if it is not that element, then the data structure does not contain the element you're looking for. Now let's look at insertion and deletion. Inserts and deletes follow a two-step process that the author calls search and splice. So say you wanted to insert the element 17 into this skip list. You would start by looking for 17, which gives you the place where 17 should go into the list. And then you insert a node for 17 and update the pointers only for the nodes immediately before 17 that have the same or smaller level than it. In this diagram, the updated pointers are indicated in gray. So as you can see, that's localized to just around the node we inserted and doesn't have to touch the entire data structure globally. And when we're inserting a new element, the level of that element is chosen at random. But we choose it in a way such that the distribution follows that log pattern that we were talking about earlier. The way the author models it is that we want a fraction P of the nodes with level I to also have level I plus one pointers. And if P is half, then we get the familiar distribution where half of the nodes are level two nodes, a quarter of the nodes are level two nodes and so on. The author has a brief proof of this, but with this kind of setup, the expected complexity of searching is log n. Now, you might ask, what if the data structure sees some pathological input? What could the worst case performance be like? And since this is a probabilistic data structure, we can do some analysis. And what the author found was that for p equals half and a data structure containing 4,000 elements, the probability that search will be more than three times the expected time complexity, which is log n, is less than one in 200 million. So not significant for all practical purposes. The author also did some quick benchmarks comparing skip lists with balanced trees like AVL trees or splay trees. And here you can see that in terms of lookup times, it is about on par with AVL trees, but much faster than splay trees. But if you look at insertion and deletion time, it is much faster than all those alternatives. Which brings us to kind of the core value proposition of skip lists, which is that it's much easier and much more straightforward to implement than most balanced tree algorithms like AVL trees and so on. And yes, this is a qualitative claim, but I think that if you've implemented, for example, AVL trees as part of a data structures course assignment, you'll agree with that statement. So that was a quick look at the paper that proposed the skip lists data structure, which is a simple data structure which can do all the things that balanced trees can do for most applications. But it does so in a probabilistic manner and is also much easier to implement compared to balanced trees. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time.
Thank you very much.